In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use Google Maps Engine to do some projects in your classroom. Um, the prior videos that I created, that hopefully you watched, will have guided you through how to use the basics, um, how to create and, you know, kind of navigate around this tool. This video is going to focus more on what you could do with it. Um, one of the things I like about this compared to Google Maps or Google Earth is that it kind of gives you uh, the best of kind of both of those tools. Um, Google Maps is great because it's online and easy to get to. Google Earth is great because it allows you to do a lot of different things. Problem is Google Earth does not allow you to collaborate and it's very hard to work on different computers if you're using it. You kind of are stuck with the one PC that you're at. Google Maps Engine lets you combine both where you're able to work online on any computer you have the internet on and you can collaborate with other users through your uh, Google accounts but it also lets you do more interactive things with your maps you can add place marks you can add lines and shading and different things to create an interactive map that you can take with you wherever you go now we're going to take a look at the beginning here um, anytime you're using Google Maps as long as you're logged into your Google account, you should bring up the Google Maps Engine page. You have a choice of opening an existing map. If I click this, it'll list a number of maps either that I've created or that have been shared with me. So these two maps have actually been shared from someone else. Now if I go to create it with me, I can open up any one of those maps and continue working. Um, I'm going to click cancel for now because I'm going to open up a new map. So if I click the new map button, a blank map will open. I like this tool to be able to do projects in which you are trying to link some sort of geographic element to what you're teaching. This could be showing settings for a story, you could be following the events of a novel, or it could be you know the events of a play. Um, I think it's great for science topics if you're trying to do any sort of geological um, study where you want to show or map where earthquakes are or where volcanoes are or certain certain geographic or geologic features um, by using the base map and choosing the different layers you can look at different things including um, terrain so you can kind of see those places near um, where ridges or trenches might be so there's some really cool features that you can bring in I like the idea of being able to create a travel brochure using different landmarks that you can find. Um, using the place marks, you can create pictures or you can find pictures online, add them to your place mark, and create a tour of places you want to go to. Um, and, and just for history itself, this can create an alternative to that hanging map role you've had on your, your, your classroom wall. You now have the ability to create numerous maps with different layers, different um, tags for different reasons and have them all at, the, um, at your fingertips on your computer. Um, they can be shared online, they can be shared via just the Google sharing, but it allows you to do a lot more. Now one of the easy ways to do projects is to import spreadsheets that have data on them. Um, there are some limitations. This is the free version, so if you'd like to import um, a spreadsheet, you're allowed to import three different layers so that you can have three spreadsheets brought in. Each spreadsheet is allowed to have a hundred things that you're bringing in. So potentially you could be bringing in 300 little place markers. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean by bringing in a couple spreadsheets that I've created. Um, in this lesson I created a spreadsheet that has some naval battles or actually these ones are Western Front battles from World War One. These are Eastern Front battles and these are some naval engagements. I want to bring these onto my map. Now I just grabbed information online. I looked up some timelines. I grabbed the names I could find. They didn't give me exact places um, but I did my best. I might have to do some further research to customize them because Google Maps might not be able to find something say like Dogger Bank. If I click on Untitled Map here this is my blank canvas. If I want to name it, I'm going to name this World War Oops, World War One Battles, and I'm going to say this is just a class project. And I'm going to click Save. Now, to begin, I have one untitled layer here. I don't have to name the layer because the information I'm grabbing from my spreadsheet will actually do that for me. So if I click Import and I'm going to go down here to Google Drive to find my account. I know it's a file I recently used. 
Um, I also know the first word on the title is World War. So world right here. I'm going to go to Western Front and bring these battles in. Now as it's importing, it's going to ask me, well, which column do you want to use to try to find the places? Well, I named that ahead of time place. It now wants to know, well, what do you want to put as the name of your markers? Well, I have a category for that, name as well. Now, dates and images will also show up on that tag, but the name is going to be what shows up on um, like the main part of the tag. So I'm going to finish that. I'm going to see my place markers pop up over on the left-hand side. And they're also going to pop up on the map. As I zoom out a little bit, I can see those locations. So I have four battles here. Now, if I click data, I'm going to see there's a table with all the different things I brought in from my spreadsheet. Four locations along with the information that was brought in. So each one of these tags, if I click on it, has a title, the dates I had listed, along with um, picture a picture link I found online. So it's an easy way to bring in these locations. You can have kids do research ahead of time, find these locations. You can even use coordinates. If they find those, it'll definitely tag it in your map. Now, these are Western Front battles. I'm going to make them green. So I'm going to click on the little paint bucket, make each one of these green, because when I bring in other placeholders, I want to be able to very easily look and tell them apart. And now that I'm done with this, there's my first layer of my map. I can add a second layer, and I'm going to import them. I'm going to bring in the Eastern Front battles. So I'm going to go back to recent Google Drive. I'm going to go to World. Here's my Eastern Front Battles. And it brings those in. I'm going to follow the same protocol I did before. Place to find the locations. Name to name the place marks. And I'm going to see these battles pop up on my map as well. Now as I zoom out, I can see here is my map. And you can kind of see the two big fronts that took place in World War I where you had the big German-Austrian force in the middle, and then you had Russia on the east, and you had France on the west. Um, if I look at these tags, I can change their colors if I want. Um, if you notice, there's a light blue, blue bar on the left-hand side that's showing what layer is selected. When I select this layer, it brings up this warning that says there are two rows that cannot be shown on the map. Well, I'm going dim to dismiss that warning. I'm going to go to Data, and it's going to show me these two things. Now for this one is a place called Balamov, which the map could not find at. That could be because that might have been a historical name and that location is now named something else. So what I'd want to do is I can either delete this or find a correct coordinate or name for it. I think it's going to be easiest to delete it, so I'm going to right click and delete the row and that disappears. Now I have this uh, Stalu Open Lithuania. It seems to be that one it couldn't find a location, so I'm going to delete that as well. Um, what I can then do is just add my own tag and say, well, I know that battle was over here in Lithuania, and I can name it Boromov, and I think I said it was uh, 1915, save, since that layer was saved, it's right there. So I can add these marks as I'm going. Now again, this is just using it for a social studies lesson, looking at the different battles of World War I. If you were using this to show you know, um, fault lines or geologic events that have happened, it could be um, historical events or discoveries, inventions, um, showing kind of the flow of ideas of where certain innovations have popped up and how they spread around, around the world. Um, it's a really powerful tool you can use. Now, I have two layers in here. I still have this regional tool, which allows me to either draw a border. So I could say, well, here's a line showing the border between the allies and the, the central powers. So I have this layer. And I can just leave this as border. That is now part of my map. If I wanted to, I could actually create a shape and say, you know what, I want to trace out all these places that you know Germany was in control of and I'm kind of going to be inaccurate here but as I go you can come up and create this whole different look and as I connect it back I now have this as the bad guys click save 
and it brings it in and I have this ability to label it if I want but it's a part of this label I can even come over here and customize the color so if I pick you know I'm gonna pick kind of a reddish pink color but that then labels this on my map so as I zoom out I have this pink shape highlighted I've noticed as I bring in a third layer that I lose this ability to use that tool to create lines I'll show you that but if I add a layer for my naval battles um, there it is I'm gonna import that last spreadsheet from Google Drive uh, place continue name finish and I see now if I scroll down there's a number of naval engagements now you'd also notice that this tool is now grayed out. The add a line or shape does not work. I'm not sure why that does that. I did some research and couldn't find it, but I've noticed when you add a third layer, this happens. Now one of the things that's nice is I could have added all these battles on one layer and just color coded them myself manually by going in here and selecting the paint bucket to change the colors. So if you really want to use multiple layers but you have multiple events, multiple events, I could do this. I could have created a World War I layer and then a World War II layer just to show where things happen in the world during those different wars. Um, I have this ability to customize though. I have these naval battles. I can come in here and click on different colors and change them. I also get that warning that it couldn't find two locations. So Dogger Bank I'm going to delete that along with the Otranto Straits. Now I remember um, Dogger Bank doing some extra research and this is actually good. Students can look in here and find different locations. Now I said Dogger Bank took place in between Germany and English, England and it was right kind of halfway in the middle. So what I can do is make sure that layer is selected, come in and add a place marker and say right around here is going to be Dogger Bank. Click Save. And there's my tag. I now have another battle here. Now what's nice is these, these um, placeholders, I can drag them over. I know that was a naval battle. I know this is a naval battle too. So I can, they, it found the nearest city, but these battles actually took place right outside of those cities. So as I go through, I see this naval presence here. And as I click on them, I can drag these off just a little bit off the coast that shows me where they were in the North Sea. I can also continue to come in here and color code, but in any project you're doing, this ability to customize your maps allows you the ability to focus on different areas. You now have this map that you can look at and talk about. Um, you can continue adding to it, so if I wanted to come back tomorrow and add some more battles or add some other feature that happened if I want to talk about Italy's involvement in the war and how devastating it was I could come in and start mapping those battles as well but I would have to add them on the existing layers um, again this regional tool was turned off to add lines and shapes so I would have to do though all those shapes before I actually um, added those but it's a uh, it's a great tool I would consider using it with your students on all manners of projects I think anything where there's a map or a location you can tie it into this program